Welcome to this tutorial in which we're going to be exploring the jump to subroutine or more commonly known as the JSR instruction, as well as a few other instructions which allow you to jump to different sections of your code. Now, these instructions have been used by me in many different tutorials, and more often than not, they were always found within the main subroutine and then they would redirect the user or essentially the PLC code to some of the routines that were also present within that same program. Today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit more in depth of the different applications that this instruction has, as well as, like I said, some of the other ways that you can uh, encounter in the field or some of the ways that you can use these instructions to create a different scenario. Without any further delay, let's get started. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So first things first, I want to review the fact that inside of the jump test program, we will go into the configuration and usually what happens is we configure the main uh, routine. So this main routine can be, of course, labeled as anything. In most cases, people prefer to label it as main so that it's easier to understand which one it's going to be. The other indicator that the routine is going to be the main of a program is going to be this little symbol on the ladder diagram, which sits on the left hand side of the name. So that is essentially the giveaway that the PLC is going to execute this routine before anything else within this specific program. Now, as I've mentioned a couple of times, the PLC is going to execute everything uh, sequentially. So the first rung that's going to be executed is going to be rung zero, then rung one, rung two. And then of course, it's going to repeat back to zero. Now, in case of a JSR, instruction, what's going to happen is as soon as the PLC reaches rung one, it's going to scan across and see this JSR. It's going to jump to the routine, which is underscore zero two underscore one. It's going to flip to the logic, which we have here. It's going to execute rung zero. Then it's going to come to the end and it's going to jump back to where the JSR was completing this rung and then go into the next rung. Now, in this case, you'll notice that I have this JSR going back to routine one, which is obviously something that you shouldn't do in the field, but it allows you to do so essentially jumping a second time to routine one before completing the main. Now, this is something that's very interesting because Essentially, within a single PLC cycle, you're going to execute routine one twice. Now, that is not something that I advise you to do, but you can certainly encounter this practice in the field. That being said, what's going to more normally be expected is this is going to be routine one. And here you'll see routine two, which is already created at the bottom here. So let's take a look at some of the essentially examples as to how you can recognize if the routine has been or has not been called. If I flip over to routine one by double clicking on the routine name, you will notice that on the left hand side, my bar here, as well as on the right hand side is going to be green. Now this green indicates that routine this routine is being executed somewhere from the code. Do notice also that I am live with the PLC, therefore the routine is being called and is being executed live. If I go to routine two, since I've shown you that I had no calls to routine two at all, you'll notice that this routine has no green color on either side, which means that this ladder logic is not being executed at any point in time by the program. So that's the way to find out whether or not something is being executed. Now, going back to the main, let's switch this back to routine two. So just to demonstrate this for some of you who are not very familiar with the logic editing online. So once again, I am online with my PLC. If I double click the rung or if I right click and then I, uh, if I edit the rung, so start pending rung edits, I can select that. You'll notice that there's going to be this in progress. I personally don't know what the uh, what the letters mean, but I can tell you that this is the rung which you're editing. This is the logic that is currently being executed by the PLC. So until you commit your changes, the previous version of the rung is being executed. So you can make any changes at this point. I'm going to change this to a two, like so. And notice that 
like I said, this rung is still being executed since you have the green bar. This one is not. Now, in order to compile the changes, there's going to be several ways. In most cases, you will see me use this symbol, which is essentially compile all edits in the program. Now, this is somewhat of a dangerous move if you're working on live equipment. Since my PLC is just sitting in a box behind me, it's no big deal. But essentially what this does is that it accepts all pending changes. Now, I know exactly what I'm changing and I'm usually doing incremental changes. So it's not a, like I said, it's not a big deal. But if you have running equipment, what I would recommend is I would accept pending run edits like so. You'll notice that the letters did change. And then I'm going to select this test accepted program edits. So if I test and I click OK at this point, you'll notice that the green has switched from this rung to this one, which means that at this point, I am executing this rung, but I still have the previous rung, which as you'll notice still calls routine one as a backup. So this is a method where you can test some new pieces of logic and you can at this point, let's say for example, you have a certain routine that you wrote and you see that it's working as expected, then you can assemble accepted program edits. And if it's not working, you can essentially untest accepted program edits. If you click on untest, you'll notice that the rung that's being executed is the old one. So this is essentially a way for you to test a new rung before committing to it completely. Because once you commit, so I'm going to show you this test again. And once I commit, you'll notice that only one rung is going to stay in place. Now, after you've committed, there's no way to go back. And essentially, if you've made a lot of changes in that same rung, there's no way to go back to the previous version of the rung because it's simply not stored by the PLC anywhere else. So once you've overridden completely, then you've committed to that new change. And at this point, if you wanted to go back, you'd have to re-edit the rung. Now, that being said, I've added routine two. So let's go back into routine two and double check what's going on. As you can see, the rungs are now green on either side, which means that we are calling this routine. And of course, if I toggle this logic, it is going to execute the OTE as I would expect. Now, the JSR, like I said, is the simplest way to navigate between routines. That being said, I didn't, I didn't specify two other methods. So they're going to be the JMP as well as the LBL methods. So let's go into routine one and see what's going on here. So here we just have a very simple rung that's executing. I'm just going to zoom in with the control and the mouse wheel. But we can add a couple of more rungs. So let's let's just Actually, I'm going to delete these and I'm going to paste the first rung a couple of more times. So, for example, I'm going to just, you know, add them at the bottom here. And here this is going to be 10. So this is going to be 12. I'm just going to um, give these different rungs some, um, some tags. Sorry, this is going to be 14. Because we do want to observe some logic, 16. 18 and I'm going to give the odd numbers on this side. So 11 will have 13. Here 15. And it is delaying just a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to have to test. Maybe the switch is having some kind of a problem. So I just have basic rungs. Now there's going to be a an instruction, like I said, which can execute based on uh, essentially in order to jump to a different location. So I'm going to insert it here. I'm just going to click this OTE. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to click this OTE instruction. And like I said, GMP is going to be the three letters that you want to enter. So GMP, I'm going to click somewhere else. And here, I'm going to label this as bottom. This is just going to be my label for the jump instruction. Now, what is required is the the label to be placed on something else in order for this instruction to know where to jump. So what I'm going to illustrate here is I'm going to jump to this specific rung and I'm going to label this as LBL. So LBL is are the other three letters that you want for that instruction. And I'm going to copy this label. So essentially the labels need to match on both instructions. So here's our bottom label. Here's the jump. And I'm going to complete or essentially compile all of that simple logic. So there's nothing, nothing too uh, intricate. But 
we do have this jump. Now, what I want to illustrate here is that if I toggle, for example, this XIC, you'll notice that my OTE executes just as you would expect. And once again, I'm toggling with the control T shortcut on my keyboard, but I can do so right here. So toggle bit. And obviously, as we've learned in the XIC and OT instruction uh, videos, if you toggle this instruction, then the OTE is just going to come on if the XIC is on. Now, here's the illustration of how the jump works. So I'm going to toggle this XIC in order to activate the jump instruction. Now, what does that actually do? It doesn't seem like much. It seems like nothing is really happening. However, if I toggle this instruction now, you'll notice that the OTE has not energized. And that is extremely, extremely critical. Now, that's actually very cool to see in logic. Now, what's truly happening is that let's go back to the main function and analyze this. So the PLC starts to scan this routine, which is the main routine as specified by the program. It starts at rung zero, which doesn't have anything exciting. It starts at rung one, then it goes into the JSR. Now let's go into routine one, and you'll notice that since this is true, we're going to energize this OTE, and we're going to energize this GMP. Now this GMP, what it does is that it immediately skips through all the rungs and goes to where the label belongs. So in this case, it's going to go into this rung four. And it's going to continue executing starting from this rung. So if I toggle this XIC, as you can see, it works as expected. And there's nothing, uh, nothing different there. Same on this local 18 tag. I can toggle that without any problems. Now, that being said, these rungs one, two, and three are being skipped by the PLC program. What this means is that regardless of this XIC value on this tag 10, 12, and 14, the PLC is never going to execute them. It's just going to bypass them and go to this rung number four where the label resides. Now, as you can probably expect, or if you don't have enough experience in the field, you can probably guess that this can pause, this can cause a lot of issues. Now, if I was the programmer, I could essentially set up this jump to go in a separate routine, which is completely, uh, which is completely non-indicative of, uh, you know, the label. So I can obviously cross reference the label just like I would do here, but it, it's not going to be extremely obvious what is executing and what is not. So this is just a, a word of caution that if you're going to start using these jumps, you better know exactly what you're doing and how you want to structure your program in order to make something convenient. And we will we will explore some more examples of this in a more advanced tutorial, but essentially this allows you to skip from a certain rung into a different location. And of course, this abides to the same rules that you would have with any other logic. So you can have a conditional step where, for example, I don't know if you have a filler machine, and you want to fill a certain bottle in a special way, let's say you want to add three extra ingredients into your bottle, then you could skip this these three steps. Although I do not recommend that practice, but that is an example. You would want to, you know, just add this one sauce into one bottle and you want to add four into some different kind of bottle. So based on the detection, you would out add all four. And if it's not detected, then you add a single one. So in any case, that's the second method that you have in order to jump between different pieces of code within your RS Logics or Studio 5000 environments. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware, software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.